sure. in the other room um, about like God's designs for like just a I'm gonna use fish as an example because they're not usually anything like like just say a bass or a great white shark any kind of shark really is not designed for eating plants it's designed for eating meat obviously by the I'm gonna use a shark as an example it's my it's the only one that I'm that I have an argument with in my head okay it's because it has the the coverings on the eyes and the uh, that cover when it bites down and it it has so many teeth obviously it loses a lot of teeth mm -hmm. so why when God created the creatures okay he created all the creatures the Bible's clear on this to, to eat fruits vegetables and nuts okay that, that's how he, that's how he created them all right. but they had the genetic diversity of the broad kind and what happened now is natural selection works on the genetic diversity okay and the creatures now survive based upon their ability to survive and what happens now is the genes that adapt that creature best to survival are the ones that get propagated okay so what happens now is the and I'm trying to think of a good uh, another ex another example that the shark is kind of a hard example because I can't take you back to its its kind because I don't have a clue what they were okay there are sharks that don't eat other creatures okay but they're not that many most of them are, are non so I can't take you back to a kind um, let's, let, let's use the example was in Creation Magazine about three issues ago about a lion, okay? Lions are generally carnivorous, but they don't have to be. There was a lion given as an example that was in a zoo that, that was basically never fed anything but fruits, vegetables, and nuts, and the animal did fine. It had no problems at all. But you got to remember that the shape of an organism's function, I mean, its teeth, for example, does not tell you what the organism ate. Be very careful about that, okay? Because I've got a, a picture in my, my repertoire here that shows a, a creature that's a fruit monkey. It looks like the most aggressive carnivorous teeth you've ever seen, okay? It's got these huge carnivorous teeth. Why? Because that's, it eats fruit. So this form doesn't dictate the function. You have to see the creature alive in its environment to know what it ate. That's why we can never be certain what dinosaurs ate. This idea that this creature is a meat eater is purely hypothetical based upon tooth function, and tooth function doesn't tell you. I've got a picture of a camel, okay, and a camel, if you look at the camel's skull, again, looks like a carnivorous creature, it's a herbivore. The, the shape of the organism doesn't tell you what its, what its function is. You've got to see it alive, functioning in an environment to know what it really ate, okay? But sharks, I can't answer directly because I don't know, you know, there are sharks that don't eat meat, but I don't know how, for how you can trace it back. Creatures haven't done enough work in this area, trying to define the kinds and the deviations. But it is, it is natural selection. And natural selection is a real process in nature. It's not evolution. It's a real process in nature. The things that survive with the best genes survive. And it's back to the poodle, you know, the poodle and the, the mud, okay? The poodle doesn't survive well. The poodle, le poodle left out in an environment would die probably in one generation. I mean, it's 156 genetic mistakes. How can you survive? <laughs> the old, the old, uh, uh, you know, the old, the old mongrel that eats the trash in the street, that dog will live forever, you know? That'll just go on and propagate and have more, more, more dogs. The genetic diversity makes a difference.